Okay, so we've got Alex with us. First time on AFTV Watch Alongs. I know, Alex, you play football to a high level. You know your stuff. What went wrong today? Lifeless, um, lack of creativity. And ultimately, we've thrown in the towel, Laurie, man. You can see it in the players. Um, we were talking at the start about the extra mentality raise you get when you're playing for something. And ultimately, because we knew we had second wrapped up, the boys didn't even want to go out of any pride. So like Turkish said, ultimately, nobody remembers the nearly team. Mm -hmm. And as much excitement, and we know we've been able to dream this season. I was dreaming of a title, dreaming of barbecue parades, all of that. We've crushed it ourselves. And, mm -hmm. you know, just get me to next season is where I feel now. You know what I mean? It's done. I could feel the disappointment coming yeah. through as I did with Turkish and to a certain degree, Charlene. But why do you think it's, the season's kind of ended with a, let's face it, a bit of a damp squib now. Back-to-back um, mm. -back defeats. There was a defeat against Brighton, which I was perplexed at. I couldn't, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, neither did I. And even that. today, I thought, following last week, being so disappointing, I thought you'd see a bit of a backlash today. I knew Forest would be difficult because we all know they're fighting for their lives. But try and give me a, an indication based on your football knowledge and mm. experience of why you think it might have gone wrong. I think it's a combination of things. I think ultimately we're an inexperienced team with an inexperienced manager. As much ways as we want to chop it, yes, we've got exciting young players, but they've never won big honours before. They've never had to have the pressure cooker on going against a juggernaut like City. And ultimately we've fallen short. And this is not excuses. These are just factors. When you think about the injuries, you know, the setbacks we've had, you know what I mean? Players playing too many minutes, Saka obviously, um, it all contributes. And I just think at the end, we've run out of steam. Do you know what I mean? We haven't had that extra impetus to go over the line, to keep locking in, to understand what certain games mean. You know, little things like we said, in-game management, um, not responding to the referee, not responding to the crowd. All these little things that at the end of the day, when you're at the top level, fine margins matter. So people might look at them and say, oh, Arsenal fans are making excuses, VAR, referee decisions. But at the end of the day, to win, you need the fine margins to go your way. And the controllables that you can control, they have to be done to the highest standard. And we haven't done that consistently enough. Enough. We've done it consistently. Don't get me wrong. We've done it for a very long time, 10 months. But like Turkish said, the Premier League is 38 games. So even if we do it for 37, it's still not enough. Mm. So uh, I've got to ask you, I asked the same question to Turkish. He was quite forthright in his response and yeah. Charlene. If you had to assess the season, I know there's one game left, but you yeah. know, we finished second. We know what it is now. City have won the title. If you had to give your assessment in a couple of sentences of this season overall, mm. how would you describe it? Ah, well, I've changed this over the last couple of weeks, of course, because of how we've kind of tailed off. But I think the, the main word is progress. However, as fans, we're tired of progress now. So I really need to see that progress actually come to a forefront in the summer, which is why I'm very excited for the summer. But ultimately, I'm very kind of on fraud watch for a couple of men, Edu, yeah. you know, and Arteta, because this is the season coming now where push has to come to shove. We've made it clear that we can go at least close to City, if you want to call it toe-to-toe, -to -toe, whatever people want to say, we've been able to do. So the test now is just like we did with the whole Sanchez thing or the almost signing Suarez. I don't want any more of that now. Mm. I want be decisive, go into the market, and that will show me the finalization of what this season has really been. Because really and truly, I could say successful now, but then in the summer, we don't sign anyone. And then next season, we finish fourth or fifth. Mm -hmm. So that's not really successful, is it? For me, a season before precedes, you know, what is going to come next. Mm -hmm. And hopefully this season sets us up for something greater. So just to press you on that. So at the start mm. of the season, what was your aspirations for Arsenal in terms of what you would deem them, what you would deem a successful, successful. season? Yeah. So in my fan cam, actually, I can't remember what game it was, but I gave my um, expectations and I said top four and I wanted to win the Europa just because we didn't have that European trophy, sorry, Europe trophy. Um, and we didn't do that. Mm. Obviously, we finished higher than my prediction, but we didn't win a trophy. And I think to finish this season with nothing, we're going to see what impact it has on the players because we've outputted a lot. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So that's why the reinforcements are critical if we're going to kind of re-energise this team again. Because you can see it on their faces, you know, little clips. I always look for the little things, you know, as a mentor, I'm looking at the, mm. the psychological things. Jack are running back, players kind of strolling along. They're knackered, they're tired. They've put mm. a lot in and they're getting nothing out. So they're going to need a fresh lease of life. And that has to, has to, I emphasise, come in the summer. Well, you spoke quite eloquently there about next season and what needs to be done. Um, in terms of players you would like to see come in, are there any players out there that you think we need to bring in ASAP in order to give us a chance of competing 
in the Champions League and the Premier League, well, all across, but in particular those tournaments for next season? Who would you like to see come in? Yeah, well, we've got the, the obvious names, the Rice and Caicedo, who I'd love to see both, by the way, not one. We need both. Um, but I'd also like to see someone experienced, someone that's going to come in and lift not only the level, but the expectation and the mentality of the fans and the players. You know what I mean? Someone like a Ilkay Gundogan, who's, you know, I'm in an R in about whether he signs a new contract, bring him in. You know, someone of that ilk that is really just going to raise the level. Because let's be honest, yes, Jesus and Zinchenko raise the level, but now we need another level. Mm. So we need someone above them. Do you really think City will give us another player after Zinchenko uh, and I, Jesus yeah, previously? Do you know what? I don't know, man. It, they've got enough as it is. If yeah. they're going to be greedy, then they can keep him. But, you know, Arteta's got a good relationship. So maybe something could work. It's just, it's one of those ones where I'm just thinking, I'm not seeing if it's realistic or not. And point. I want to ask you as well, um, Turkish mentioned it in his fan cam and he was quite, um, he was quite outspoken about it. Mm. He feels that we need, and I do agree with him, by the way, that we need to bring in a striker, somebody who can get goals on a prolific basis. Do you agree with that? And if so, who? Yeah, so first of all, I definitely agree. Um, I was of the impression at first, because I've definitely changed my mind on this, with the way that Arteta plays, he likes obviously players that are adaptable and you know sharing goals across the team, that's a factor. However, what I do agree with is that we need that plan B, which means we need another striker, quite mm. simply. Jesus, we knew we weren't signing a prolific striker. We knew that, right? I said when he came in, 10 to 15 is where he's at. He's at 10 prem goals, don't know where he's at in all comps. So we need someone of the profile of Tony. I'd love to see someone like that. And obviously if I'm thinking dream signing, it's maybe an Ossiman or maybe even a Vlajevic. But to be honest, the striker market is quite you know difficult as Chelsea fans will tell you with their number nine crisis. Yeah, yeah. Um, so those are the two names that I can think of off the top, Tony, but obviously he's banned or Vlajevic go back in for him try and maybe reignite that hunger you know a bit of love lost maybe and then he can come and prove himself so yeah mm. and finally just to wrap up how do you think we can do next season okay you, you've said and I do agree that we need to bring in players but from what you're seeing with the manager and the players do you think we have it in us to have another good season next season and to compete at the very top, meaning the Champions League and the Premier League. Are you confident that we can make a good run of it next season? Yeah, I'm confident that we have the right foundations in place. I think the only difference will be that will make me waver is obviously we're going to be competing in the highest echelon of European football, Champions League. And that means that we can't do the Europa thing, which by the way, we still got knocked out of, of resting and rotating and just fluttering through it. We're going to have big games you know, on straight away on a group one day, we could be in a group of death, anything could happen. So the summer is really going to be the dictating force. But if you're pushing me now, I'd say I'm definitely confident that we can go ahead and challenge again because we've laid a good foundation. Okay, that's Alex. And he's spoken very well, very eloquently. Um, enjoyed your company, bro. Yeah. Pity it couldn't have been on a, on a win. Well, on a win <laughs> but hey, it's always next time. Thank yeah. you very much. Shop for AFTV merch at shop.aftv.co.uk. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, and Twitch. We've got content for every platform, so check it out.